Hundreds of millions of landmines lie hidden in the ground. But now there's something to counter them. Giant African pouched rats. Miss Marple is one of them. And this is her unusual story. Tanzania, East Africa. There's a unique school here, a school for minesweeping rats at Sokoine University. With long, sensitive whiskers and an excellent sense of smell, nimble and always inquisitive, rats as big as cats stole Bart Vetjen's heart. Vetjen's is in charge of all the keepers and their rats here. A few years ago, he had the idea of training rats to save human lives. These intelligent animals had fascinated him since his youth. Bart was a punk and kept them as pets. Obviously, I do have a special relation with rats. They're wonderful creatures. Uh, they have uh, very often been wrongly understood by humans. Uh, and with this program, we can somehow uh, reverse that spiral, spiral, turn around the image people have about rats, and, and show that indeed rats can do very beneficial things for humankind as well. Rats have a better sense of smell they concentrate better, and they fall ill less often than dogs. They're small and clever, they learn fast, and they're a lot cheaper to train as mine detectors. Miss Marple is one of the best. She got the name because she's a great detective. She spots every little clue, just like Agatha Christie's heroine. And yet she's just following her rat instincts. And now she's getting ready to go on a long journey. <laughs> the last briefing outside the lab. <laughs> Nico Saroni is Miss Marple's teacher and keeper. He's trained her for a year. He would never have believed he could build up such a strong bond with a rat. Here in our country, I mean, we don't like rats, you know. So when I was introduced to them, the first day, you know, I was very scared even touching them, you know. But later on, you know, I get used to them, and then I like them, yeah. Today is a special day for Nico and his little group. All his animals are leaving with him on an important trip. Miss Marple is on her first mission. Now she has to show what she's learned over the past year. Nico has packed the rats carefully and made sure they have enough food. He'll be with them throughout their mission. It's a two-day journey by road and by air. He's accompanying his charges to their destination. All the way across Tanzania to neighboring Mozambique, once the site of a terrible civil war. A journey of 3,000 kilometers. It all began here in Morogoro, in Bart Vechen's lab. This is where Miss Marple was born.
with three brothers and sisters, bare and blind, in the tender care of their mother, Zaina. Right from the start, Miss Marple would always be the first to get her milk. Nico takes good care of his rats. Eight of the hundred rats in the lab are his personal responsibility. He already reckons Miss Marple is going to be one of his best mind sniffers. Mother Zaina has her paws full, keeping her family together. Miss Marple will soon be making her own way, but for now, she's half blind. She can only vaguely make out her mother. Her hearing and her sense of smell are much better developed. A baby rat's day is pretty much about drinking, cuddling together, and sleeping. But that was ages ago. Now Miss Marple is grown up. Mozambique. Nico faces hard days in the minefields. Miss Marple is left in a big storage hut to get used to her new surroundings. She's not quite sure yet. Nico's camp is surrounded by the debris of war. It was once used by armed rebels. Now Nico and his colleagues will stay here for months in the empty houses till all the mines in the area are cleared. Until then, the villagers will look after them. <laughs> Mozambique's civil war raged for 30 years first against the colonial power, Portugal, and then a rebellion against the new government. A million people were killed. The country fell into chaos. In 1992, the massacres ceased, leaving behind grief, orphans, ruins, and two million hidden landmines. The people of Tuene village near the camp have heard about the project. Hard for them to believe that rats can help. How can a rat find a mine? This man asks. The mine clearers do their best to explain. The village headman, Francisco Cosa, welcomes Miss Marple and the others. I didn't expect that these rats could find mines. From now on, we have to protect them all the time. Miss Marple becomes a star. These people have never had any idea what rats can do. They always saw them as pests. But Miss Marple wins them over, long before she has to go into action. Back in the rat lab in Tanzania, and back in time, Mother Zaina watches over Miss Marple. Two of the brood have died. They were too weak. Now the remaining two are one month old. They're growing their first fur, and they can see. Her sister may just want to sleep, but Miss Marple keeps close contact with her mother. She's a good sniffer too, and scientists wonder if this is an inherited talent. Soon Nico will begin the training. Miss Marple is properly aware of him for the first time. Over three years, Nico has trained lots of other rats. Mm -hmm. 
he feels quite attached to his charges. When I go home and then I find some people have killed the rat, you know, I just feel like very upset, you know, because I'm taking back off my, my rats at work. Yeah. Miss Marple soon recognizes Nico's voice and his smell. Physical contact is very important in the first six weeks. Only during this short period can the animals be habituated to humans. Nico's boss, Bart, is always busy raising money. Rats versus landmines, mini sniffer dogs. A lot of people thought Bart was bonkers. In the beginning, it was very difficult. People just didn't believe me. They laughed at me and uh, yeah, just took it for granted it was a joke. Until, uh, well, we were serious and uh, with the help from professors at Antwerp University, uh, people had to take us serious. Today, charities and the Belgian government support Bart's project. Slowly, he's improving the rat's image. The Hero Rats website has attracted a lot of sponsors. Two-month-old Miss Marple is ready to start at rat school, and she's given her own travel cage. In their artificial burrow, Miss Marple's sister is, as usual, snoozing, but Marple herself is as inquisitive as ever. In the lab, the rats are thrown off their rhythm. In nature, they're nocturnal animals. They should be waking up just now, not dreaming. Outside in the wild, rats are just getting busy. On the lookout for anything they can eat. They collect fruit and vegetables and stuff them into their pouches like hamsters. Curiosity, acquisitiveness and perseverance are the very qualities that make the rats so effective at finding mines. And it helps that they're so light. Weighing in at no more than a kilo and a half, they won't trigger any mines. They drag their booty into underground holes where they store it in different chambers. When food is short, they find it again, thanks to olfactory maps registered in their brains. Usually, pouched rats are very cautious in the wild, but sometimes promising scents lure them into the open. That's what happened to Miss Marple's grandfather. We're not far from the small town of Morogoro.
This man is a rat catcher, and he's an expert. Wherever a rat is causing a problem, he's there with his cage. He takes the captured rats home and looks after them. Sometimes he has a long way to go to catch a rat on a plantation. Most of the people hate them. They're pests that destroy the crops. And they're amazed that the rat catcher doesn't kill them. But he has a good use for them. He sells them for 5,000 Tanzanian shillings each, about three euros. That's a lot of money around here. He brings them to their new home, Bart Vetjen's research and training lab, rat school. In neighboring Mozambique, the people still can't move about freely. Thousands fall victim to the mines every year. They're terribly crippled. Argentina Cunha lives in this village not far from the minesweeper's camp. She's walked on crutches for 10 years, ever since her left leg was amputated below the knee. Argentina has three children. She can only survive because her sister looks after her. It was a Sunday. I went down to the river to wash my clothes. When I came back to dry everything, I stepped on a mine. That's how it happened. Nico visits Argentina. She has heard of the rats and their human helpers, but it's too far for her to walk to their camp. Nico tells the family what the rats can do, how, with their help, the landmines can be removed. Miss Marple is here too. Nico uses her as an ambassador for the good cause. Miss Marple is nervous. She's not used to having cats close by. And this is the first time Argentina has held a rat in her arms. Until today, a rat was at best something you could eat. At two months old, Miss Marple started the sniffing class. It all starts with the clicker test. The lesson begins. Miss Marple has no idea what it's all about. but she makes the connection pretty fast. Click means banana. Click means banana. But then it gets more complicated. Nico adds the smell of TNT, and then there's a click. And finally, the banana. That way, Miss Marple is trained to look for TNT. The smell of the explosive is stored in her brain. She'll never forget it. TNT means click, means reward. The first lesson went well for Miss Marple. Straight A's.
Nico is one of a team of 70 locals who work with the rats. Nico earns 150,000 Tanzanian shillings a month, or 90 euros, enough to buy food and clothes at the market in Morogoro. He's better off than many Kenyans. At first, people refuse to believe that he trains rats. But this Rasta man spreads the word. Miss Marple's curiosity is limitless. At four months old, she's fully grown, and she never stops gnawing, scratching, and digging. Metal cages cannot hold her. Like many of her fellow rats, she breaks out one night and goes walkabout. But Bart Wietjens knows his charges. Little breakouts like this happen quite often. Why shouldn't Miss Marple take her chance? Bart keeps repairing the cages and improving the locks. We had to actually improve some of the lockers. Uh, before we had uh, an open grid is actually one of the reasons why there is a, like a covered plate so they can't really reach anymore on the locks. Because they would reach it and, and then try and pull the lever. But they almost always manage to catch the rats again. And they never go far. The end of the excursion for Miss Marple. Outside the lab, on the training minefields. More than a thousand disarmed mines are buried here. One of Nico's colleagues regularly comes here to vacuum up scent particles of the explosives. The smell stays in the ground for years, even if the mines are destroyed. The specks of dust are filled into small canisters and then used in the training of the rats. More nourishment for Miss Marple's nose. Miss Marple is five months old. Nursery school is over. Real school starts. She enters the glass cage for the first time. The cold metal floor has holes in it. Many different smells emerge from the holes. Miss Marple has to pick up the smell of explosives. The trainers know where the TNT is. They record the successes and failures. A quarter of an hour walking up and down. A hundred scent samples. Hard work on the rat walk. Nico is studying Miss Marple carefully, checking her reactions. TNT, click, banana. She knows how it goes. Miss Marple is making good progress. She's found nine of the 10 TNT samples, but she has to get 10 out of 10 right. Yeah, I'm not. 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 I'm not.
Mozambique. The villagers of Tuene have organized a welcome for the mine detectors and their rats. Their thoughts go back to the victims of the war and they invoke benign spirits. Nico has the greatest respect for these rituals. The village elder is blessing the minesweepers in their dangerous work. They all drink wine from the same bottle, a symbol for the fact that they're sitting in the same boat, in the middle of a minefield. Tanzania. Bart Vätjens, the spirit behind the rats project, in search of peace and inspiration. He is the punk who became a Buddhist monk in Africa. His thoughts are with his team doing their dangerous work in Mozambique and the people they're protecting. This is where Nico comes home to after work. He rents two rooms on the outskirts of Morogoro. He isn't allowed to keep a rat as a pet. Nico is 29 and he's already worked as a tourist guide and a journalist. Whenever he has time, he picks up his law studies. He cares about justice in society. That's why he likes reggae. He doesn't only teach the rats, he learns from them too. When you, you really have to work with these animals, you really have to be patient and you really have to concentrate. And then you can apply the same thing, you know, in our, in our day, day life, you know, I mean, that patience is virtue and then concentration in whatever you want to do. So some of the principles that I apply when I'm training rats, I apply in, in my normal life, you know, with, with friends or with people, something like that. At seven months, Miss Marple moves on to the next stage. She's given a special harness attached to a lead. This is a very strange contraption for a rat. Unsurprisingly, she doesn't know what to do with it. But Nico is patient. Marple pulls herself together and starts looking for explosives. But everything is different here. The lead, the soil, wind, noise, and the tea egg smelling of TNT. Not bad for a first go, though Nico tries to encourage her to do more. Joker. It took a while, but now Miss Marple is ready for greater things. Mozambique minefields. Preparations for the clearance are in full swing. This machine rips through the bush like an armored dinosaur. 
it has to make space for the rats to take over. If it runs over a mine, the worst that will happen is a burst tire. The armor plating on its underside will see to that. Five months before going on active duty, still in the lab at Morogoro, this is the eve of Miss Marple's biggest training test. Nico wakes her at 6 a.m. It's going to be a big day. Miss Marple won't recognize what she sees outside the cage. This is the first time she's been away from the lab. And now she glides through the landscape, past the fertile plains to the foothills of the Uluguru Mountains in the heart of Tanzania. The people are on their way to market. They're used to seeing the Ratmobile pass by with its unusual cargo. at the training field. The lesson has to be over before the sun is high in the sky. The rats don't like heat and their sense of smell becomes less acute. Nico and his colleagues take the rats to the farthest fields. What can this mean? Rats attached to long poles? But some of this is more familiar. And Miss Marple is still curious. Nico buries the TNT eggs that Miss Marple must find. Rats can smell eggs buried as deep as 15 centimeters. It's a special day, and it's a difficult day because, first of all, the rat has got to, use, to get used to the harness and then to, in, to the environment. So you find that sometimes now they become restless. You really have to be pressing. It's Miss Marple's turn. She already knows the harness. The final test begins. She's had no breakfast today. They need her hungry. She starts the search. She really wants her banana reward. Up and down she walks in carefully controlled strips. Noise, smells and wind. So much here is new and confusing. But after a few difficult moments, she remembers her lessons. That was it. TNT, click, banana.
But then the collar starts to itch. Luckily, she's habituated to Nico. And he has a few tricks to get her back to work. In spite of her willfulness, Nico is pleased with Miss Marple's performance. This is the first day, you know. I mean, whenever she, she touches the, the, the tea egg, I mean, it just clicks and then it, it indicates that I mean, at least she knows something. Yeah. There will be five more months in the practice minefield. Each day will be like this. Mozambique. The minesweepers are starting work. They wear protection against flying fragments and stones. First, they set to work with metal detectors. If it whistles, they start to dig carefully. This could be a mine. The specialist expertly clears the topsoil. Without the rats, it's a slow job. Rodents are both faster and more accurate than machines. The detector has found metal, but it's not a mine. Tanzania, the training minefield. Miss Marple wouldn't have made a mistake like that. She's now a year old and has everything off pat. She practices on fields cleared of undergrowth, just like the real thing. She goes straight to work, following her nose. Nothing distracts her, not even the giant millipedes. Miss Marple is concentrating on her job. When she finds explosives, she scratches the soil and alerts the trainer. No doubt about it, Miss Marple is a top sniffer, one of the best. And that means she'll soon be off on a long journey to the real minefields. Tomorrow, they set off for the demining mission in Mozambique. Nico and his colleagues take time out on the football pitch. It's a way to relax before the coming weeks of tension. A way to forget the job ahead. But the fun also has another purpose. It helps to forge the team they will need to be when things get more serious. Mozambique, a few days later. Nico and his colleagues wear flak jackets to protect them, but their arms and legs are still exposed. Thank you. 
The atmosphere on the first day is tense. Uh, when the landman blasts, you know, you know what happens. So you have to be a little bit careful and you have to make sure that you don't get off the safe lane. Uh, all the time you really have to be careful whenever you're in a real minefield. Uh, I think about the people who are living here because I know that if you are successful in doing this job, I think a lot of people will be safe around this place. Yeah. Every movement is slow and considered. Even Miss Marple seems to feel the tension. Miss Marple is the second rat on this strip that's being demined. The previous rat didn't find any mines, but it has to be a fail-safe process. They always scan each strip twice. Nico watches closely, every step, every movement. Miss Marple seems to have found something Miss Marple has found her first real mine. She has proved herself. The position is marked to be dealt with later. Meanwhile, in Morogoro, they've not been lazy. Bart Vietjens has a new idea. He's made a tiny rucksack carrying a miniature camera. A rat carries the camera through a maze of debris. The idea is it could be used to find people in the rubble of trapped buildings. The rat is specially trained to seek out the smell of people. But the principle's the same. Smell, click, reward. The first trials with the camera are encouraging. One day, they'll be able to direct camera rats via clicking sounds transmitted to the rucksack. Right, left, forwards, back. Bart Vetjens reckons the rat's potential is far from being exhausted many possible applications. There are security applications, uh, customs applications, uh, environmental applications, uh, detection of toxins and uh, pollutants in the environment. Um, there is actually anything that has to be detected uh, has a smell and animals are very good in smelling. So I think indeed our rats have a bright future, not only in landmine detection, tuberculosis detection, uh, victim rescue, but eventually also other more commercial applications. One of these applications, developed by Bart and his co-workers, is already very advanced. Bart likes it when the team come up with ideas. Rats in the fight against tuberculosis. 
Normally, suspect saliva samples from the hospitals are examined under a microscope. It's expensive, slow and unreliable. It's easy to miss TB bacteria with this microscope check. But the smell of saliva infected with TB is very characteristic. So Bart jumped at the chance to test samples on specially trained rats with excellent results. In Mozambique, it's time to destroy the mines they've discovered. The one Miss Marple found is carefully uncovered. This is the most delicate part of the operation. The mine clearers must not touch the top surface of the mine. A pressure of as little as six kilos can set it off. Only the light-footed rats are safe. Once the mine has been revealed, the shot firer can start work. Sandbags are laid to absorb the blast. A hundred grams of explosives will be used to destroy this mine. It's a three-minute fuse. Plenty of time for an ordered withdrawal. It worked. Miss Marple's mine is destroyed. Nico and his colleagues will stay in the minefields for another three months until all the mines are destroyed and the people can live in peace again. Money. The villagers are delighted at the prospect of a normal life 15 years after the end of the war. Miss Marple, after her first mission. Nico is proud of his pupil. She's done well. Actually, we treat them as heroes, you know, when they come back from work and we feel proud of them, you know, and it's just like that sense of love increases, you know, between you and your animal because it did something which is wonderful, yeah. For Nico Saroni and his rats, the work goes on, but the story is over. Or no, not quite. Miss Marple's life has changed a little. As a mature rat, she met a male and had three babies. For a while, TNT, Click and Banana will have to wait. She has other things to think about. Has she passed on her talents to her children? Nico's now got to find names for her offspring. How about Sherlock, Watson, Maigret, and 
Agatha. <laughs>